for voice and video. Hi, everyone. Uh, again, thanks again for joining today's session, Optimize Your Network for Voice and Video. I'm Monique Lucy, Director of Product Marketing here at Live Action, and I'll be your host. And I'm joined by, today by Lee Cox, Senior Sales Engineer at Live Action, and David Azumo, Principal Technical Marketing Engineer here at Live Action. So you can please feel free to go ahead and ask any questions in the Q&A panel on the right. And the session's being recorded, and you'll be receiving an email after the session. And you will be able to play this back. And we also have some additional resources that you may find useful. And you can find these by clicking in the attachment tab. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Lee so he can begin the demonstration. Thank you, Lee. Take it away. So hello everybody and welcome to this demonstration of using live action and its front end live NX to troubleshoot voice over IP issues. So I'm going to start with one slide um, that gives a general overview of what the product does and then we'll move straight into the, the demonstration. So at a high level, uh, live action ingests uh, SNMP data we ingest uh, flow data, and we API integrate into third-party providers such as um, SD-WAN providers and cloud providers. To give you a full end-to-end -end view of what's happening with your network and what's happening with the applications as they traverse that network, and that's across the multiple domains and the multiple fabrics. Also notice, looking at my slide, that we ingest um, packet data. So we have packet capture engines. And using LiveNX, you can look at the holistic view of a, you know, of a whole um, global network infrastructure. You can really zoom into a specific flow of interest. And if that doesn't resolve your issue, um, you can cross-launch to the underlying packets for that specific flow to do a deep level forensic analysis of what's happening with that data. Our packet capture engines um, are also used to produce flow. So you may have an area in your network where you're unable to send flow for whatever reason, uh, you, you know, the device might not support flow or you might not want to enable flow on a you know, really highly utilized um, device. So you can use our packet capture technology to produce flow on, you know, in, that, in that, those particular areas of the network. We also produce performance metrics. So um, similar to um, Cisco application visibility and performance monitor, we're able to produce performance metrics um, a use case that a lot of our customers are using us for is in the cloud. So uh, in AWS, um, you can have a live wire virtual, which is our packet capture virtual engine. Uh, it can take a copy of the packets within the cloud infrastructure, and it can give you performance metrics. So you can compare um, network delay versus application delay on those really difficult to see areas of the network. Okay, so moving over to the demonstration now, we have two ways to interrogate the product. We've got a desktop client and we've got a web UI. At the moment, we're looking at the desktop client because this gives uh, really great visualizations of what the network looks like. So what we're looking at here is my um, demo cell and I've got a MPLS infrastructure and hanging off that MPLS infrastructure, I've got a number of sites and I can drill out. So, you know, this could be a global network and then I can just drill into a, you know, a, an area of interest. And I can drill in further. So if I drill into my site, New York here, the green circles here represent devices. So I have three devices in my data center in New York and I can see how those devices are interconnected. 
and I can see the live bandwidth going over the interfaces on those devices. Notice also as well, we have some endpoints. So endpoints are not on the topology view by default, but if you've got an, end, uh, an endpoint of interest that you want to um, diagnose and you want to do some further analysis on the flow to that endpoint, you can always add it onto the, to the topology view. Okay, so we have our topology view. It looks very much like a Visio diagram and should be very familiar to a, a network engineer. Then we overlay the flow data onto the topology view. So now we're looking at a consolidated view of all the flows traversing the network infrastructure. And you can see that we've uh, put these flows into their different application groups. So we want to do some voice over IP troubleshooting. Um, so I want to filter on specific flows to do some troubleshooting. So I've been alerted about a guy who's in Seattle and I've been given a specific IP address that's having some issues with voice. So I just want to check out the, uh, the quas marking or you know, the DSCP value to make sure that he's getting the, the correct quality of service that he should be. So I'm going to change my filter here. I'm going to change it to um, Seattle Voice. And you can see we've got a, a number of different flows for um, voice traffic coming out of Seattle. Um, but I'm really interested in this particular IP address. So I'm going to add a dynamic search. So I'm going to look for just that IP address. So I'm going to look for 192.168.100.11 and press enter. So I've used two filtering mechanisms there. I've got these predefined uh, dynamic filters, which I've just created myself. And then I've used this, um, this dynamic filter on the left hand side which I've created interactively and I can see my flow from this particular IP address to this guy down here and I just want to check the DSCP marking so I can change my display so if I change my display to DSCP I can notice that my legends changed and now I'm looking at the DSCP markings just for this specific flow of interest. And I can see that most of my flows are correctly marked with expedited forwarding. So the flows going to and from New York are all good. So you can see the directionality here using the arrows. And the flows, the, well, the flow coming from the uh, specific IP address going to New York is correctly marked. But if I look at the flow coming out of the MPLS service provider, I notice that it's actually best effort. So um, I don't have any quality of service marking on that particular traffic. And this is a real typical use case that we see in our customer environments. So you can have all your quality of service markings, you know, correct on all your devices throughout your infrastructure. Um, but it's really typical for a service provider or say an erroneous device to strip off that marking and without a way of visualizing and you know like we're doing now using the live and x front end it's really difficult to find those kind of issues within your network infrastructure okay so i'm just going to get rid of my dynamic filter there um, I'm going to change my DSCP back to normal display filters. And I want to look at all the Cisco voice traffic within my infrastructure. So I'm going to change my static filter here and just click on Cisco voice. If I look at what that filter is actually doing, so we're just looking for, we're matching for all the different Cisco um, voice protocols. You can see down again in the left hand corner that my legends changed again. So this time it's just displaying 
all the different Cisco voice protocols. And that's what I'm looking at now. So I've got rid of the background noise of all the applications, and I'm just looking at the Cisco voice traffic traversing my network. And I'm going to change my, uh, my display again. And this time, I want to look at the performance. So I'm getting performance metrics from my devices, and I can see the flows that are you know, within uh, SLA. They're green. But anywhere we're getting uh, jitter above 30 milliseconds or packet loss, then those particular flows are highlighted. And I can get a table view of that. So if I click on the table button here, this is actually all the individual flows traversing the infrastructure. And we can see the flows that are having the issue. So I want to find now, you know, where within the infrastructure this problem started. Why am I having this particular issue? So if I double click on one of these flows, it will bring up my flow path analysis. So the flow that I clicked on, um, I can see hop by hop the route it took to get from its source to its destination. I can see the individual devices that it's traversed. Again, this is a demo environment, so we've only got three devices that the traffic's traversing, but you know, in your real world networks, you might have 10, 20 devices. And we can give you this hop by hop view, as long as you're sending the flow data to us, we can give you this hop by hop view of what's happening with that flow in the different areas across the different devices within your network infrastructure. So notice when the uh, flow leaves our DC in New York, we're getting no packet loss, we're getting no issues. Uh, but when we get the when the flow is received on the router in Los Angeles, we're getting a high packet loss. It's also um, alerting us to the fact that we've got an ingress policer and that's turned orange. So we're dropping packets on the in, in, ingress policer. And you know that could be a good indicator of why we're getting packet loss on this particular device. And if we click on the show path view here, it'll actually draws out the specific flow on the diagram. And it shows us where within the infrastructure, again, the problem resides. Okay, so now I've switched over to our web UI, and I first want to show you our topology views uh, using the web UI. So we've got two topology views, and if I click on the menu here and click on topology, we have a geo topology view and a logical topology view. So if I click on the geo topology view, what this does, it loads up a Google map view of the locations of our sites and on this on this map we can then like we did on the desktop client we can overlay the application data so this is a more of a, a consolidated view of the applications and the flows so we don't see the individual flows on this view but it gives you a good indication of you know what applications are running where and you know what markings we're getting on each of the applications. So for example, I can filter now. So I can filter for an application and I'm going to filter for voice over IP. And I'm going to apply that filter. So this is really um, for say a first level uh, knock engineer um you know who's uh, probably new to to networking he can get some real powerful insights into what's happening uh with the network and with the applications in just a few clicks so notice i'm again i'm looking at a specific area of interest which is the united states but again this could be a you know a global network infrastructure and i can see all the flows uh associated to voice over ip and again i can change the legend so down here, I've got my legend, and I can change it to DSCP.
And now this will tell me uh, the DSCP markings just for the application voice over IP. And I can see again that you know most of my um, most of my markings seem correct. But if I just click on the best effort down here, I can see I've got a few sites that are marked as best effort. So it's a really easy, simple, high level way to discover where you know certain applications are not marked with the correct DSCP marking. And we can do a similar thing using our logical topology. So again, just click on the menu, click on the logical topology. So these topologies are built automatically for you within the product. All you do is click edit, um, you pick the sites that you want, you click save, and it will produce this topology view. And you can have different topology views. So I've got a tab here for USA WAN, and I could create a new tab for, you know, for a different area of the network, or I could put my whole network into one tab. And again, I can zoom out and I can zoom in. And again, I can do the same filtering. So I can look for an application. And again, I can look for uh, voice over IP. Click apply. So again, I'm filtering just for my specific voice application. You know, it's taken me uh, just two clicks and um, I put my filter in there. And now I can see all the sites that, uh, that are using uh, voice over IP. And again, I can change the legend. So I can change to DSCP. And at a high level, I can see, you know, which of my sites are using the correct markings, you know, using exploited forwarding and uh, which are in uh, the best effort class. Again, if I click on best effort there, I can see these these links that are, that are not marked correctly. So really, really easy for, you know, a first level NOC support guy to come in and understand and find issues, you know, with the cross markings in your network infrastructure. Okay, so the next scenario I'm going to do is I'm going to look at our alerts page. And I'm going to filter for a specific alert. So I'm looking for a, a voice alert. Okay, so I'm interested in this alert here. So this router in Los Angeles is running voice over IP and it's got packet loss of 10.53%. Uh, and I can click on that alert and it brings up this little side menu. So it shows me the site, uh, it shows me the device that's having the, the issue. I could run a report here, um, but I can also click on what we call the conversation. So if I click on the conversation, it brings up this. So it brings up um, very similar to what we saw on the desktop client, um, it gives us a, a path analysis. So we can show again, hop by hop, uh, the route that the uh, application took to get from source to destination. And it's just for this specific flow of interest, the flow that we got from the actual alert. So you can see here we've got the with the the, um, the router in our DC in New York, and we're not really having any issues. We're getting a warning here that jitter, you know, it's getting high, but it's not uh, it's not got to a, a critical set status. We can see our MPLS service provider, and then we see when the traffic hits the router in Los Angeles, we're getting the the packet loss. So the problem resides somewhere in this part of the network. And again, we've got a, an ingress policer here. So that might be an indication that we might want to look at that. We might want to modify our policer. And again, this is this is visualizing, um, you know, where within a network infrastructure that you get a problem with, uh, with voice over IP or voice traffic or any application. Um, Without, uh, without the ability to visualize that, which live action does, 
these kind of problems are really, really difficult to track down and to find, you know, to find where within the infrastructure the problem resides. Notice here as well, we've also got one of our uh, live wire packet capture engines um, taking a copy of the data. So if we really wanted to do a deep level forensic analysis of the packets just for this specific flow, we can press this peak button. And this will now redirect me to my uh, live wire packet capture device. So notice the filter here. So we're filtering just for this specific flow of interest. So just for the flow that we've been alerted for and the conversation that we've been alerted, alerted to. Okay, so I'm gonna call that um, voice over IP capture. Press start. And that now creates a file uh, just for that specific flow. So here's my file that's been created. And if I click on the file, it then takes me into a forensic search for the underlying packets. So if I click on the packets here, I can see all the packet data for that voice call. And we've got a number of um, advanced analytics and expert analysis tools that really help you get to the bottom of a problem. So if I click on voice and video here, we can see the MOS score. Obviously, we're just looking at one call here. So the MOS score for that call is really bad. It tells us the, the packet loss here. It lets us know what the codec is. And it shows us the utilization of that call. And if we click on the uh, event log here, it lists um, you know, all the issues that uh, the packet capture engine has found with this particular call. So if I click on an event summary, it summarizes all the issues. So instead of trawling through you know, lots of um, packets and trying to find what the problem is, our expert analysis tools help you find that needle uh, within the haystack. Okay, so that's the end of the demonstration today. Um, I hope you got a good view of how you can use live action to troubleshoot uh, voice over IP issues. We can go from you know, a holistic network, we can go from that holistic network to pick a flow of interest, and then if we want to, we can cross launch to the underlying packets to do a deep level forensic analysis of those packets. Thank you for listening. Thanks so much, Lee. That was really helpful. Um, so today we've got a few questions that have come through on the chat. So the first one here is, uh, does the geotopology view use SNMP address for location or something else? i.e. GPS coordinates in the case of SD-WAN. So, um, David, could you answer that question? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so network engineers are able to enter the address of the site uh, within LiveNX and the software will resolve the geolocation. And as a result, you can plot those sites on the geo topology that Lee was showing. In addition, the question also asks about SD-WAN. Uh, so that brings up additional uh, use cases as well, where we have integrations with SD-WAN controllers and from there, we can gather geo coordinates or address information if available via our API connections to populate the site location within LiveNX. Thanks, David. Um, so another question is around what is the name of the monitoring application? 
Yes, great question. So the application that Lee was demonstrating here is Live Action Live NX. It's our flagship monitoring product. It also fully integrates with our packet capture and analysis products. In that case, uh, Lee was showing LiveWire as well as Live Capture. So that's where we can uh, take in packets from the network, convert it as well into flow information for up-level monitoring within LiveNX. And that allows for the uh, drill downs from uh, high-level views all the way down to the raw packets itself. Excellent. Um, so here's another question for you. Can LiveNX alerts be integrated with external systems like ticketing? Yes, great question. So LiveNX has full integrations with ServiceNow. Many of our customers are leveraging ServiceNow for their ticketing, uh, their alert management, and uh, managing various uh, tickets that come into the IT organization. We also integrate with PagerDuty. And then likewise, uh, any one of the alerts that we have within LiveNX could be emailed to various folks on the team or also offloaded to a syslog server so we can convert it to syslog and send that off to the server for triage further. Thanks for that. Um, here's another question. Can LiveNX be used to fix voice over IP issues? Yes, actually, that's a that's a good question. It's going to be the main topic for the next webinar within our summer hackathon series. So we'll be going into how we can leverage LiveNX to fix VoIP issues leveraging QoS. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. Nice plug for the for the next webinar. <laughs> um, so can LiveNX help with bandwidth and um, planning and upgrades? Yes, definitely. LiveNX has full capabilities for WAN capacity planning, reporting on 95th and 99th percentile uh, for capacity of the links. Our, also, our Live and A platform for AI ops includes WAN bandwidth prediction and when uh, links will overrun capacity, along with even per QoS queue bandwidth analysis and prediction as well. So take a look at uh, LiveNX and also LiveNA for AI ops to get a good understanding of uh, bandwidth planning and upgrades. Thank you, David. So um, if you would like more details, you can find additional resources in the attachments tab and additionally, you can request a one-on-one -on -one demo or download a free trial by visiting liveaction.com. And you certainly don't want to miss out on the second part of our summer hackathon series around QoS, which will be held next month. Thanks so much for joining.